Hi, it's Ron Pazinski, President of ConCare. We've been talking about the things that need to be evaluated before deciding on what to do with your concrete slab. We've talked about the things that are to be considered with new concrete and existing concrete. Now we're going to talk about what needs to be considered in terms of physical requirements. In other words, what are you going to do with this, this floor, this slab, uh, once you've finished treating it? So there are at least six criteria that need to be considered. First of all, are you going to be using any kind of chemicals on that surface? Now that can be a big question, but it really comes down to do we need to protect the concrete from contaminants getting into it? Do we have chemicals that could leach into the concrete? Also, do we have flammable materials that may need to be controlled in that environment? Do we, uh, which would mean we might need some anti-sparking materials, we might need some special highly chemical resistant materials to stand up to what you're going to do to that concrete surface once it's finished. So that would be the first criteria that we need to consider. The second is thermal shock. Uh, thermal shock really means exposure to either excessively high or excessively low temperatures and then the reverse occurring. So let's take, for example, a freezer. You've got a freezer application, and someone comes in with a, a hot, hot steam line to clean the, clean the surface, and they hit that cold concrete with a, hot, with a hot material. You may get some deterioration issues that really need to be considered before you decide what to do with that so that you get the maximum value out of your investment. The third thing to consider, third criteria, is mechanical abuse. If you're just walking on a surface, that's not really too tough in terms of traffic. If you've got forklifts, that's a little heavier. But let's say you've got, I don't know, front end loaders, steel tracks, things like that that need to be driven across the surface. That may require a whole different level of treatments to get you where you need to go. And you'll want to understand what those are. In machine shops, you may have metal fragments and things getting on the floor. In some, kind, some kinds of uh, operations, you may have some particulate or some abrasive that gets on the floor. You're going to want to know what those things are and if you really want to make sure you get the maximum value out of your final investment, you want to consider those with the contractor, the person that's evaluating them with you as well. The next criteria would be static dissipation. Uh, although most people think of this in the electronics field as something to, con to be considered, there are requirements in industry where static dissipation or anti-static floors need to be a need to be addressed as well. And in those cases, you'll want to make, make sure that you understand where that might come into play. Uh, we talked a little bit about flammable environments or chemicals that might have a flammability issue, and certainly you'd want to consider that as a static dissipative environment. But you may also have powders that might be, uh, might be able to um, you know, ignite under the right circumstances. So consider that as part of your overall evaluation process. Also, in some, in some environments, uh, the food industry, the pharmaceutical healthcare industry, there may be a requirement for antimicrobial finishes. Uh, in other words, a way to minimize the growth of bacteria and other microorganisms during between cleaning periods. And uh, there are ways of creating an environment using toppings or coatings on concrete to help you get there. And then the last major criteria that I would always consider as well is sloping or, or pitching of floors. Uh, if you've got a flat floor and you're going to have a wet process, you're going to put drains in that room, you better think about how you're going to get that water to go to those drains before you go to the, the extent of investing in a new finish and then you haven't really solved that problem. So in terms of the uh, evaluation of your physical requirements. Spend some time and really understand and make sure you communicate what the things are that you're going to do to that finished surface after you're, you're done installing a new topping or, or coating or some other application on, on your slab.